Namaste yogis and welcome to Yin Yoga with Matt. So today I'm offering you a beautiful Yin Yoga class focusing on intuition, that sixth sense that we have. And doing Yin Yoga puts you really in tune with yourself internally. And it's in those moments of silence that you really get to connect with your inner self. And this, as a result, will enhance and deepen your intuition. Intuition is something that we can enhance over time and we get better at. It's that signal that lets you know that this person might not be a good person for you. You shouldn't go into this situation or you might have to turn left instead of, instead of right. So having a good intuition is really useful in life. And whether you believe it or not, I'm sure there's been moments in your life where intuition kicked in and it probably saves you from trouble. So today we're gonna to be working on really connecting with ourselves, putting a focus on intuition. So for today's class, all you're gonna need is a bolster and a block, and I'm currently sitting on my block. So if you have a block, just take a moment to put it underneath your glutes, and then we're gonna sit up straight. We're gonna be closing our eyes, dropping our shoulder blades down, loosening up the neck. You can put your hands on top of your knees, we're just going to do deep inhales through the nose and exhales through the nose. Just taking this moment to really dive deeply inward. And as you deeply breathe in and out through your nose, just connect with that middle part of your head. Try to put your focus on your pineal gland, which is that little gland right in the middle of your brain. And that is believed to be the center of our intuition. So really send all your energy and all your focus directly to that part right in the middle of your brain as you keep breathing in and out, calming your body and mind. Imagine all of the energy of your body flowing internally, coming all the way up and really supercharging that middle part, the pineal gland. It's the third eye chakra. It's another name that we can use in yoga.
And from here, I'm gonna invite you to open up your legs. Leaning forward, we're just gonna be putting the block in either the highest setting, medium setting, or low setting, depending on what you feel like doing today. And we're just gonna lower ourselves into a squat. Putting your elbows inside your knees, palms together at your heart, sitting up straight. This is really good for the posture. It's a really good way to, to open yourself up, enhancing the energy and flexibility within your body. So I'm choosing the highest setting today because I feel a lot of tightness in my hips and inner groin. Some of you might have no blocks at all. Just do what feels right for you today. Always focusing on your breath, deep inhales, deep exhales. And from here we can slowly bring our hands to the ground, lifting our hips up, creating some space to move the block away. And then we can lower ourselves down onto our knees. And we can turn to face the front of our mat. So from here, we're just gonna be going into a very relaxing child pose. So sitting down on our heels and tucking our toes, I'm gonna invite you here to take one big inhale and on the exhale, we can place our hands forward like we're diving, scooping them around and then bringing our forehead to the ground with our hands back and the back of our palms on the floor. So this is really good to connect with your third eye, the chakra of intuition. And remember that this moment is a special moment for you. It's a moment of wellness that belongs only to you right now. And you should embrace it fully.
And we can bring our hands in line with our shoulder, pushing ourselves up very slowly and coming on to our knees, sitting on our heels, dropping our shoulder blades once more. And we can take a moment here to just take some deep breath. Really enjoying how we are starting to feel. And remembering that today's class is about trusting yourself, sharpening your intuition, and becoming better with it. And from here, I'm going to invite you to bring the bolster just nearby. We're just going to bring the bolster behind herself, basically at the base of her spine. And we're going to be going into saddle pose. So this is quite intense at the front of our thighs. And for me, that's why I use the bolster. It helps me to get into it. So with the bolster at the base of the spine, our feet basically in line but a little to the outside of each thigh we're just going to be lowering ourselves down very slowly all the way to the bolster so as you lower yourself down maybe you might stop here notice that there is a lot of tightness in your thighs just letting it relax waiting for your body to open up and invite you to go deeper into saddle pose. And as you are getting more comfortable, you can lower yourself down even more, coming all the way down to the bolster if you can.
and we can brace our abdominals coming down to our forearms pushing ourselves up with our hands when you get a chance and just making our way forward releasing the tension in our legs it might feel good to just slowly stretch them back one at a time And we can take the bolster away from the, for now. So from here, from all fours, we're gonna go into melting heart. So keeping your knees in line with your hips, I take one big inhale. And on the exhale, we're gonna walk our hands forward, allowing our spine to curve and coming all the way down to the forehead. Making sure our hips stays in line with our knees. This is great to open up the spine. It's really great for the upper back. That's another great asana to connect to our third eye chakra. Which is the goal today. Sharpening our radar system and being more in tune with ourselves, with what we feel, with what we believe. I'm just going to invite you to move your hips forward and then opening up the right knee keeping it in line with your hip with your right foot pointing outward and then we're just going to lower ourselves down into our forearms for sphinx pose sphinx pose sorry with your elbows in line with your shoulders palms on the floor in front of us so we're doing sphinx pose with a hip opener so that should feel really good for you and then just reconnect with your breath deep inhales and deep exhales through the nose
And from here, if you want to deepen what you're experiencing, you can go into seal pose, so just placing your hands in front of you, pushing yourself up. Just going to deepen what you're experiencing in your low back and in your hip right now. And if that's too much, it's okay to come back down into regular sphinx pose instead of the seal variation like I'm doing right now. slowly lower ourselves down flaring out our elbows palm one on top of the other just gonna bring that right leg back in in line with our body and we're just gonna be resting our forehead on the back of our palms here lying down face down and then relaxing here releasing the low back for a moment And when you're ready, you can bring your elbows back in line with your body. And then rolling a little bit on your right hip, we're just going to open up the left leg, 90 degree angle, with our left foot pointing outward. And then from here, we're going to bring our forearms down, elbows in line with your shoulders, right leg extending back and behind. And we're going to go into Sphinx Pose with a left hip opener this time. So you might notice that one side feels more tight than the other. In my case, this side is tighter than the other. So I'm not going to go into the cell variation. On that side, I'm going to stay in Sphinx Pose for the whole length of this asana. So just listen to your body and do what feels right. No judgment here.
can lower ourselves down slowly, flaring our elbows out and slowly bring that left leg back in line with our body. So with our palms again, one on top of the other, we're just gonna rest our forehead on the back of our hands and just settle into this. Enjoying the release in our low back. And when you're ready, you can slowly bring your elbows back in. And I'm going to invite you to just turn onto your side here, supporting yourself with your left forearm. We're going to extend the right leg in front of us. And with the right hand, we're going to grab the left foot, pulling it in. So this is a variation of cat pulling its tail. It's one where we support ourselves on our elbow. We just enjoy how that feels. So you can reconnect with your breath, closing your eyes. And let's explore this variation together today. And you can let me know in the comment section how much you enjoyed it after the class. And we can slowly release the left leg. And from here, I'm going to invite you to just bring that left leg inward and pushing yourself to the seated position. And we're going to be bringing the sole of our feet together in front of us. And if you want, you can place the block on top of your feet. So we're going to be going into butterfly position before transitioning to cats pulling its tail on the other side. So let's just take one big inhale here. Exhale, lower yourselves forward, lowering your knees to drop down. And then you can place your elbows in front of your knees. Yeah, or your hands in front of you, whatever feels good. Just enjoying how that feels. 
or your inner groin, but as well for your low back. You can feel that nice release at the bottom of your spine. Again, supporting your forehead with the block allows you to connect with your intuition. Without intuition, we would find ourselves in trouble quite often. It's definitely a great system that we have as humans. System that's there to help us throughout our journey, which is life. And we can slowly push through our arms, raising our upper torso, coming all the way up, and then just enjoying again moment here on the rebound. Place the block aside, and now I'm going to invite you to roll to the right onto your right forearms, extending your legs in line with your body, and then we're just going to bring that left leg forward, a 90 degree angle, and then with the left hand we're going to grab the right foot, pulling it behind, and then supporting ourselves on the forearm. Again, this is a new variation of cat pulling its tail. Feels good. I like the support on the forearm. It opens up the side of my body as well. So just let's reconnect with silence here.
can slowly release the right leg, bring the left leg back in, and then we're gonna be making our way down to our back. I'm just gonna go get the bolster quickly, but if you had it nearby, just bring it down with yourself. So from here, with our legs at a 90 degree angle, we're just gonna lift our hips up and then we're gonna be bringing the bolster at the base of our spine. And once we're here, the back of our palms firmly planted on the floor, I'm gonna invite you to raise your legs straight up in the air with a slight bend in your knees. So this is really good to bring all the pooling blood in your legs back down, getting some fresh oxygen from your lungs and heart and sending some of that blood through your head to really enhance your mental clarity and energize your brain. So let's just settle here. You might wiggle your left a little left to right. Wiggling your legs to massage your low back here, which feels great. We can bring our legs down, bring our feet to the floor with our legs 90 degree angle, lifting them up and then pushing the bolster as we lower our hips down. So we're going to be placing the bolster right underneath our knees, extending our legs in front of us, the back of our hands again on the floor. Let's just settle into Savasana to just really fully relax here and just connect again with our inner self letting go of any thoughts any tension or muscle connection that you are exercising with your mind right now just imagine melting down onto the floor.
So if you're comfortable right now in Savashna, I'm gonna invite you to stay there a little longer while I make my way up to the seated position to conclude today's class with you. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's class focusing on enhancing our intuition. Intuition is something very useful in your day-to-day -day life and something that I would like you to be really more in tune with on an ongoing basis. So if you like this class, please subscribe to my channel. It's a great way to support me. You can share the classes with friends, family members, or on your social medias. Or you can donate to my PayPal account, which is always appreciated and the only way I support myself through this channel right now. So hands at our heart, deep in hell, and exhale. And that's it for today. So until next time, namaste. Bye, everyone.